Yeah, go right in. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so when I was thinking about coming here today, I thought that it was important to kind of inform you about the organization that you are about to work with. So um, I'll just get started in a bit, just talking a little bit about me and my background. I will share about KIPP as a network, as a national network. I will give some information specifically about our school, KIPP Journey Academy. The after school program is called KIPP Connect Boys and Girls Club, BGC Boys and Girls Club. So then I'll talk more about the after school program. Then I'm just gonna give just some general information about why after school, why engineering, and kind of my vision for the project, kind of what I think, what I would kind of expect to see, you know, when I see you all working with the students. And then we can kind of discuss some possible challenges through maybe your questions that you might have for me. So just to get started, my name is Anita Mullins. Um, my background is, is actually elementary education. So um, I did obtain my master's from the Ohio State University in Education um, back in 2000. So I started teaching in 1995. Um, in elementary education with Columbus City Schools. I did eight years there in Columbus. Um, then I decided to move to Florida, and I was in wonderful, sunny Orlando, Florida for about five, five and a half years in their education system, and then I returned to Columbus, Ohio in 2009, and I ended up getting into the after-school world. So um, I bring my experience as a teacher into you know, the after school programming. So I have a lot of ideas and visions of what I would love to see based upon my experience as, a, as an educator. Um, KIPP. So KIPP stands for Knowledge is Power Program. And KIPP is actually a network of about 130 schools nationally throughout the United States. Um, KIPP schools, as a whole, typically their students are 95% um, African American and Latino students. The, the uh, student population is made up of students who qualify, like 86% of those students qualify for free or reduced lunch. So typically, if you travel to different cities, you'll find KIPP schools in more high poverty, low income areas. And that as, is as a network, you will find that. Um, however, Despite those challenges, KIPP has sent 85% of their students to college. And that's basically our big mantra is that we will work hard to get inner city youth to and through college. And you'll find that at every KIPP school, the story is pretty much the same, that we have changed the lives of families, we changed their trajectory to the, um, putting them on that path to college and exposing them to so many experiences that they may not have otherwise had. So that's a little bit about KIPP. Um, it was actually founded by two gentlemen. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Teach for America, but Teach for America is a program that takes um, people from college who have not majored in education but have some other background in college, some other degree, but who have decided to become teachers. So there were two gentlemen, um, last names Feinberg and Levin, who were in the Teach for America program and they were just appalled by what they saw in urban education because typically um, Teach for America candidates are placed in a high need school somewhere throughout the country. And so from their experiences down in Houston, Texas, these two gentlemen, they just said, we've had enough. We need to start our own school. And so the two of them went door to door once they went through everything they needed to do to get a school started, they went door to door and they said, we're gonna just start with fifth graders and let's just see if we can get a group of fifth graders and start a school and basically that's what they did and it was just so much success with their program. Um, they separated, um, one stayed in Houston, the other went to Bronx, New York to continue the KIPP program and again, based on their success in those two locations, eventually the, um, the owners of GAP the clothing store, that, what we know. They created the KIPP Foundation. They partnered with these two gentlemen and created the KIPP Foundation in order to replicate what they saw happening in these two areas um, from these two gentlemen. And that's where you get the, the KIPP Knowledge is Power Program Network. It is actually supported by GAP Incorporated um, at the foundation level. Um, 
But at every KIPP school, there's one thing that you'll see every time you go in there, and that is no shortcuts. Also, the, um, like our motto is work hard, be nice. So you'll see that everywhere, work hard, be nice, work hard, be nice. Um, some other, just a KIPP credo I thought to write down. If there's a problem, we look for a solution. If there's a better way, we find it. If a teammate needs help, we give it. And if we need help, we ask. And so in every KIPP school, you will hear these words. Um, the entire student and staff body is referred to as a team and family. So it's just a totally different like atmosphere and closeness that you find in KIPP schools. Now KIPP Journey Academy is the actual middle school that you all will be working with. We are located in the Linden neighborhood, which is um, 71 Highway Hudson. It's an exit off of 71, and if you head east on that, you will end up in the area that's referred to as Linden. Um, and that area, all of the schools in that area, elementary, middle, and high, are all felling schools. And so that is the main reason that KIPP decided to open up there um, back in 2008. And they started to with just 50 fifth graders. And just in the same way that you will hear KIPP stories throughout the country, their success with those 55th graders led to a sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And just two years ago, having our first eighth grade class move on to high school. And those eighth graders, I would like to say, came to KIPP with a um, proficiency rate of only about 30% proficient, you know, on their uh, state assessment. When they left eighth grade, those students as a class were 85% proficiency rate on their state assessment. And so what um, we tell parents is that if you bring your child to us and we need them earlier because obviously there are some challenges and things going on in their lives that had them behind from the start, but bring them a year earlier than a typical middle school, we're gonna do our best to help get your child on that path to college. And we have shown that year after year. So, so far we've had two um, classes go on to high school. And something unique about the school is that we have a full-time high school placement specialist that starting in seventh grade works one-on-one -on -one very personally with each family to inform them of all their high school options so that they can make sure they make the right decision to continue that path to college in a college prep high school. And I don't know if any of you are like locals in Columbus, um, but we are very proud to say that um, given our demographics, and what may be associated with our demographics, um, academically, educationally, that we had three students who um, were accepted into um, Columbus Academy, which is like a very elite um, high school here in the city of Columbus. And those three boys are actually all on the football team. And as a school, we are going September 7th to their first um, home football game to support them. Um, so. Um, when you walk in our building, you're, you're going to see this wall that has all these top college prep high schools. And you'll see our students' names next to those schools, and that's just indicating where they were either accepted or now attend. Um, we have two girls at um, Columbus School for Girls in Bexley, Ohio, if you're familiar with that. And we have two boys that are um, right now having a successful time over at St. Charles in Bexley, Ohio. So just an example of some top schools and that, you know, Kip every year are getting our students into these schools and, and at KIPP is where they're learning what they need in order to be successful there. Um, KIPP right now is a five through eight middle school. Um, we too have 90% of our students qualifying for free or reduced lunch. 93% um, of our students are African American students. Um, surprisingly, they are African American. We do not have many African students in our school, which I'm surprised because to me the North Columbus kind of has a, a high like Somalian population, but we don't have that population in our school and I don't know why. Um, our other students are typically um, Middle Eastern or white American. So you'll just see that mixture in there. Um, KIPP, I, I would say due to its foundation um, with Teach for America, I think in every KIPP school you go to, you will see a good percentage of Teach for America teachers there. So uh, KIPP Journey Academy has about 30% of its staff who are Teach for America um, teachers. 
Um, from my background, coming from an education, career college, undergrad, grad, and teaching in a public school setting, and then now working with teachers who have gone through a different route to become a teacher, I have found that those teachers are, have, they have a different level of passion for education that I've ever seen. And I think, you know, to make the decision to kind of totally change your career path and say, hey, I see something wrong in teaching, I want to go there. I see it exemplified in those teachers based on their passion and dedication to education. And I do attribute uh, Teach for America for a lot of success of, of KIPP. Um, you may not hear that from an average public school teacher, but I've experienced it, I've witnessed it, and there's a lot of passion and heart there. So the state has recently changed how they are rating schools. So in the past, you would just see if they're um, effective or failing, you know, you would just hear those general terms related to schools. And starting um, next year, schools will now receive letter grades, A through F. So this might be just new information for you. Um, Florida already had this system, so when I looked for a school in Florida, I would see if it was an A school, B school, C school. So starting next year, you'll start seeing that in Ohio. But they sent out a preliminary report at the end of, for the end of this school year to just see how um, schools would do on this new rating system. So in the past, we were always rated effective, which is like two levels down from excellent and two levels above um, failing. So we're like in the middle. So effective is like in the middle. And you know there are areas that we definitely um, have areas of growth. But we did receive an A in the area of what's called value added. And value added is a measurement of a student's academic growth in a given school year. So, and this is what I just kind of tell parents, like, we may, meet, we may not be an A school, but any child that you bring to us, we promise you, you will have significant gains from where they are year after year, more than a year's worth of growth. We're talking a year and a half, two years worth of growth every year. So that's that value added rating, and we did earn an A. And I just recorded, like, our ranking, because for us it's a big deal. Um, that out of all of the Ohio schools, eight, 814 schools, KIPP was rated number 24 um, for their value added results, results. And that's the amount of growth that we show in our students in a given year. Out of the entire Franklin County, there are 61 schools, and we were ranked number six out of 61 Franklin County schools. The schools above us, Hilliard, Southwestern, Columbus Prep, Upper Arlington and Dublin, so we like, we were right up there, you know. So um, that was reported by our executive director just recently that, you know, even though we may not be at the top, like I said, we are changing the lives of these children by giving them a quality education. Again, we're taking them where they are and helping them achieve. So as a result of this outstanding um, academic growth is happening every year, um, going from 50 students at the start in 2008 to now, we had about 350 when the year, but there's like different things that happen, like kids say they're coming and don't come, so we're probably at about 335 students this year, we're jammed to capacity, you'll see that when you visit the building, but um, as a result of that growth and that success, we have um, purchased um, it was a former golf course um, called Ridgeview Golf Course. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Um, about 125 acres were um, recently purchased for the building of our new KIPP campus. So next school year, 2014-15, we will be moving our middle school from KIPP Journey Academy in the Linden neighborhood, going just a little further east, prop, prop east probably about just three miles, kind of a little closer to Easton. So when you see where our school is, you'll see, oh, they're not that far from Easton. Um, but we're moving a little further east to our new campus, and everyone is just so excited um, about this expansion. Um, we will be adding kindergarten and first grade next year. So um, as years progress, those first graders will move on to make our second and third and fourth grade. So that in the coming next three years, we'll have a full K eighth program with the plans to eventually expand into a full K-12 campus on this beautiful 
beautiful former golf course, so you just have to see it. It's, it's going to be unreal for um, our students. So, like, it's just unbelievable where they are about to go to school. So, moving on to Kip Connect Boys and Girls Club. So, Kip Journey Academy uh, received a five-year grant to have an after-school program at their school, and one of the requirements was to um, partner with a local organization, and we partner with the Boys and Girls Club of Columbus, who have an outstanding reputation of providing quality after-school care for um, children ages 6 to 18. And so, KIPP Journey Academy, the school day is from 8.30 until 4. And then from 4 until 7, right now we have 90 middle schoolers who stay after school to be part of the Kip Connect Boys and Girls Club. And in the Kip Connect Boys and Girls Club, we offer, well those three hours are really broken up into like three segments. The first hour, all the students, it's like a study hall. They're expected to do homework. I'm working on bringing in volunteers to, you know, if they need tutoring or answer questions for homework. But we have Boys and Girls Club staff and we have Kip teachers who are there during our homework time the first hour. The second hour we call um, interest clubs, and those clubs tap into the students' interests. And typically that's where the sports are, the arts, that's where those things will happen, theater, things like that. On um, the last hour we call inspire clubs, and those clubs are designed um, to inspire our kids to be better, to become um, productive citizens, a lot of character development, uh, mentoring type uh, groups, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts happen during that time. So that's kind of how the day is, is laid out. And then the last hour we have a hot meal that we provide for our students. Um, let's see if there's anything. With the, the grant that funds the after school program, there's three main goals that I'm required to fulfill. And that is to provide support in math and reading. And we do that in a variety of ways through the um, homework time as well as the different types of clubs we offer. Um, the second main goal is to have positive youth development activities. So that's just the big umbrella that encompasses, you know, your different um, art clubs, sports club, the character type clubs, different type of activities all fall under positive youth development. And then finally, my third main goal is to have um, to engage the families and the community um, that is involved with KIPP. So I have periodic um, events that happen throughout the school year for the students after school. The importance of after school. For a lot of parents in like elementary schools, typically after school, like I had a parent say the other day, this is just like a latchkey program, right? And like when I hear that, I feel like you're saying we're babysitting and that is not the case for the KIPP Connect program. We are really trying to enrich the lives of these kids and the fact that they are middle schoolers in a high poverty area, our main purpose is to provide a safe haven for them to be where they're, they're not able to get into trouble that we all know can happen. And so the research shows that um, those hours from like three until seven are like the high peak hours of like juvenile Crime. So it is so important to have after school programs happening throughout the city. Why engineering? So um, there's just a nationwide push to just expose students to the STEM programming, science, technology, engineering, and math. And obviously it supports uh, the goal of increasing their math performance. Um, for me, I feel that I'm just as uninformed about what engineering is as the students are. Um, just different programs that I've brought in over the years. I've been with the after school program here at KIPP for three years and it's just so many areas of engineering that I did not know about and just the way that um, our guests can present it to students to engage students to help them understand hey, you can be an engineer, or you know, there's different types of engineers, um, it's just, you can't put a value to it. And so, um, for me, I want our students to have that knowledge. You know, as we say with KIPP, we're trying to give them experiences 
and knowledge and information that they may not otherwise ever get to help them, you know, on that path to college and to learn about different co career options. Like now is the time. And you all definitely probably know the earlier you start focusing on college and your career, the better off you'll be. Um, I wasn't a person who um, did not know what I wanted to do in life. I wanted to be a teacher since I was a little kid. My dad's a teacher. But my sister, you know, she grew up and it's time to go to college and she has no idea what she wants to do. And still, she just went into business and nothing against that, but it was just like almost picking, okay, I do business. And now, still, she's not happy with what she's doing. She's She's, you wouldn't necessarily call her successful. So, you know, we want kids early on to learn and, and to know the options that are out there to hopefully, hopefully they can lead, up, end up in a career choice that will make them impact others and to be happy in a career that they choose. So, my vision for the Tech 8 project, um, so we always like to look at things by saying what it will kind of look like, sound like, feel like. So we actually write that up to help people kind of see, you know, what we envision. And so as far as look like, in my mind, when I walk through the halls, when you are there working with the children, I'm, I'm, just, the, I'm just excited to see hands-on. I'm excited to see, like, energy and enthusiasm. I'll be excited to see, you know, dialogue going on, the students engaged. Um, so that's a little bit of what it sounds like. Um, what it feels like. I don't know if you can say it feels like learning, but, um, but just all of that combined, how it will look, how it will sound, there will be no question that kids are actually learning from what you are doing. It's not just a club after school. You are actually teaching them about engineering and engineering concepts and helping them to make a future decision. So um, that's just briefly my vision. Um, some challenges you might face. Um, I think just looking at like my staff and some challenges, I think if they ever have any kind of the reason why, um, just come in with the attitude of like, I'm gonna make a difference. I think, um, like I mentioned about the success of KIPP, I think it's due to people being very passionate about what they do. And I feel that the fact that you all are engineering students, um, leading into a career of engineers, the fact that now you get to go share and talk about engineering, to me that equals passion. And that same passion, I feel, just need, you just need to have it come across to the students. That enthusiasm and excitement you have, I would assume, for engineering, just let it transfer right on to the students and they will embrace it. Um, KIPP is a very, very, very disciplined environment. So, don't expect behavior challenges. Um, given the demographics, you may think, uh-oh, what am I about to get myself into? But it's not, don't, don't even think about that. You will not typically have behavior issues that you'll have to deal with. That's not gonna be the problem. Just make sure you come with enthusiasm, ready, passion, and they're yours. They're just, they are yours. And they are just so willing and so eager um, so, do you have any questions? I've been talking a lot. <laughs> any questions, any fears, any thoughts, concerns? Yes. This was a long time ago, but to get to go to like Columbus Academy, how is that funded? <laughs> well, actually, if you, um, and I actually have some information for you. I don't know if our board members are listening here, but we have a, um, a very impressive, board, um, including Abigail Wexner, who uh, um, assists yeah. in, <laughs> in some um, <laughs> funding for our school and our students. I mean, so that they are more expensive than OSU. Exactly. So they absolutely get assistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So you know, we've heard this thing called hypnotizing. Yes. Uh, and I, I've experienced it, and, and several others of us who, who visited have experienced it. And the first time I was in the class, and, mm -hmm. and I was in front of the class talking, and, and all of a sudden kids are doing this, and I'm like, they must be listening yes. to their, their iPhone, iPods yes. or something, you know. And, so the teacher explained to me what that was. Are there elements of the hypnotizing in these efforts today? So I just yeah, wanted, thanks, Howard, for reminding me about that. So our students that are new to KIPP, they actually spent two days um, in school before the rest of the school returned to go through hypnotizing. And so basically that's where they're learning different little um, just ways and procedures that actually happen at KIPP and something that you might notice that he mentioned instead of like clapping for someone, kids snap. And so like in a classroom when they want to, you know, congratulate someone or celebrate something, you hear snapping and the, but the classroom is still calm and quiet. So just the whole calm, orderly and quiet atmosphere is just echoed in every classroom through different techniques such as snapping. Um, and our, our fifth and sixth graders are more so hypnotized in our seventh and eighth grade. They start losing it a little bit. <laughs> but our fifth and sixth graders, if you call on them, like they thank the teacher. Thank you, Ms. Davis. You know, so they learn to do that. Um, something that's really big that they learn is that anything and everything is earned. So um, basically the hypnotizing process was to earn to go to class. So they went through all these different activities and different things to earn class, and they learned of how they can earn different rewards and incentives. Everything is earned is what they learn. Um, tracking, we use a term tracking all the time, to track the speaker. Um, so when you're talking, just how you all are giving me your attention with your eyes to know, you know, so I know, we say track, track the speaker. So, you know, teaching the kids to do that that we kind of know to do. Um, we use the term slant. So if a teacher comes into a room and say, and, and you will not necessarily use these after school, but just, you may just see it, hints of it there. Um, if the teacher say, I need everyone to slant, so that means they're sitting up, they're listening, their arms, they're like this, their feet are on the floor, and it's just a certain almost body positioning and everything that they know to get into. So someone just say slant. <laughs> so, you know, that's just part of hypnotizing, and that's um, what I mean when I say that um, these things are in place in school every day, so it absolutely um, controls any type of, like, behavior or discipline issues. The after-school program is a little looser, but um, this year the school started a merit and demerit system, so the kids are actually wearing lanyards that hold merit and demerit cards that now after school we also utilize. So they can earn merits and demerits based on their um, performance and actions after school. That um, in your rooms, the staff member that's in there, they have that power. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we'll be coming between 4 and 5.30, I believe. So how was that going to affect kind of the schedule that you already have planned out for the kids? So good question. Um, basically, it's um, in a sense um, changing the schedule, obviously. So it's six Mondays, consecutive Mondays. And so just arrangements have been made that you know, during that time, this is what's happening every Monday. Um, followed by, we're still deciding on if we want um, interest clubs or inspire clubs. So most likely it'll be fo followed by interest clubs, which is a huge incentive, you know, for students after school. So we're just laying out the day differently okay. for those Mondays. Yes. So all the students at um, BGC are going to participate in this, these engineering challenges? The after school program students. Yeah. So. Um, except our boys and girls basketball team because they are practicing for a competitive sport so we're going to allow them to continue um, so that'll pull a chunk out leaving about 50 to 60 students to be divided amongst you all yes so since there are 50 to 60 um like so how, how big are the classrooms going to be like like in comparison to this one um, 
just some, um, there's two rooms that are like half of this. Mm -hmm. And then the other rooms, I think, are all good sizes. Not this size, but they're all okay. good sizes. Um, there's some rooms with tables, and there's some rooms with desks. The after school staff, they're um, well versed in getting the room in order every night for the teacher. So if you need to put desks together or move desks to work, you can do that. And they're in charge of getting that room set back up. Are you all excited and nervous? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you ready to get started? Said, you said a little bit of both? Um, I think Andrew, I don't know if you were talking about like projecting your voice. Yeah, so this, like my voice is pretty loud, but that that matters, mm -hmm. you know. So and, and just captivating your audience, everything you've learned about, you know, speech and what you need to do, speech class, and projecting your voice and all that, that is um, power. And just kids want you to be powerful. Um, a student just yesterday told me I was sitting by him and I said, James, I just hate being so mean. He said, I don't want to be that way. I want to just have fun after school. He said, Miss Mullins, you have to. He said, they won't listen to you otherwise. So with that, I'm saying to come in with an attitude of just focused on what you're there to do, commanding them to do what you want them to do, not coming to be their friend. And it, I'm not saying like, you know, don't be nice or anything like that, but don't come with a mindset that you're, you're, you're gonna try to win them over in a friend type of way. Don't come with that mindset, they will smell that and they will take, you know. <laughs> you know kids, you, you, they will just eat that up. So they'll love it and start talking to you about your hair and your clothes and what you did last weekend and what movies you like and don't let them get you off on those tangents. They're, they're just testing you. So stay focused on what you're there to do and just, you know, keep them focused. And they'll look at you a little bit maybe like, but they'll do it. Once <laughs> <laughs> so they ask you, hey, what's your favorite movie? Like, or, like how would you? How would you respond to that? Without like, being mean, you know what I mean? Um, right now, we need to, I would just say, right now, we need to focus on this, and I might have a little, you know how my body gesture, a little smile. Well, right now, we need to. We can't talk about movies right now. We need to focus on our project. And then later, you might even go over to them and say, "I love." I don't know what movies you want. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite movie? I don't know. What. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know why Robocop came in my mind. <laughs> make that connection, uh, yeah. but don't let them get you off in, in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. And then you can just make that connection, oh, I love Robocop. Make sure, make sure you stay focused. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yes? So, and, you know, one of the things I've noticed is there's a lot of um, say and repeat, sort of almost uh, a thinking kind of thing. Now, I know that's during the daytime and that's necessarily in the afternoon. Is there anything that you would encourage our students to take up, even though they have a witness directly, that's in that kind of a that, that will make them more comfortable? Um, if anyone is comfortable with like creating their own little call and response, or when I was a teacher, I would just say, get it. You all say, got it. Get it. Got, got it. it. Good. Like, it's just a little simple thing, but if you want to come up with your own little something that they would know, oh, Mr. Jones says that, you know. Um, they do a lot of chanting, so they come up with little short, rhythmic rhymes to teach and different things like that or to like school spirit type chants like you may walk through the building sometime and hear those so the kids are used to like that rhythmic chanting call and response after school we say great futures and the kids all say starts here you know just something i used to say uh kip connect what time is it and they say it's time to, it's time to have fun wait i changed it Oh, it's time to have fun. It's time to bring out the best. And they always said it was like too many syllables and bring out the best. <laughs> so, but just those little things, like if you ever get in the mood to have fun like that, if you want to come up with something and teach them. Um, say engineers. OH. They say OH. And then oh, say. I know. <laughs> they would love that. Um, that's a good thing to point out. Um, every homeroom has
has a college name. When you walk in our building, you're going to see college pendants everywhere. So the students, their homeroom is referred to by what college typically that teacher uh, attended. So they are all into college. So if you, you, know, you want to share that, anything you do, Ohio State, they will love it. Is there an Ohio State classroom? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> People had to fight over that one. <laughs> We got a lot of um, OU, my principal and some other people, they're always going at it. There's a lot of OU people there, a lot of Wittenberg people there. Any Michigan? We don't have any Michigan. Nice. I, don't think they're I don't think they're allowed. So we got two UNC, we have Amherst, um, NYU, so you'll see that, and those are their homerooms. So I know it's like, So after school, the after school staff, they go by first name, but a miss or mister in front. So Kara is an after school staff, they call her Miss Kara. So um, I think you should do that, the miss in your first name or mister in your first name. So, <laughs> Except me, I'm Mullins. Do you know how we introduce ourselves? Like, so, so saying like, hey guys, I'm Nate. And so like, hey, I'm Mr. Nate. Yeah, say Mr. Nate. Okay. I think so. Do you have any sort of preference on how we dress? Like, do you want us to dress, look, like maybe the way that you dress, or do you want us to be in jeans and Good question. Make it's comfortable? Um, I think you should be comfortable, um, but mature. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe not um, your cut off shorts. You know what I mean? Where you might have on jeans and a shirt, but you're still comfortable and casual. Um, but it's not as recreational looking, maybe. Okay. Um, even though our Boys and Girls Club staff, they wear their Boys and Girls Club shirts and they may have on sweats and bottoms and all that, but they've already gained the students' respect. And yes, your, your look, you know, they do judge you by that, you know, the <laughs> students. So every little thing they pick up on. So to me, that just has just a more uh, demanding presence, just not as recreational. Do you expect us to have the same students week after week for those six weeks, or almost the same students, or does it kind of vary depending on the week? That's a good question, Andrew. Um, were there any thoughts on rotating the, the OSU students from different groups of children? She's asking, will they have the same students for the entire six weeks, or? So I think that's something. Okay, so what we've been planning is that you will have the same group for, for the six week period. Okay. For the first week, it's everyone's together and you'll be working with them, but you won't have them in your individual classrooms. For the five weeks following, you'll be able to introduce yourself and work with one group. Okay. That's the plan right now. I think that's what we're gonna run for our pilot. It allows you to make connections, get names, get a little bit of familiarity, a little bit of that you know teacher student respect. Mm -hmm. The attendance of those 90 students is very consistent or mo like mostly consistent? It's very consistent right now. Um, the program just, I don't know, it's just in demand and we have 80 on the wait list to come into the after school program. So we order 80 meals at night and we may have two to five left over. So, um, Meaning, some kids get picked up before seven o'clock, but they're there. <laughs> they're there. I don't know, this is like a really unique um, yeah. project, you know, because you're not quite teachers, um, but you're learning those, those, some of those tricks to help you in presenting these projects. That's interesting, yes. Going off that, um, we've, been, we've been doing our presentations like ask questions or have them read off the PowerPoint. Like, what are some tips you would give us to engage them and get their interest? So you said, you said have them read a little Yeah, like have oh, them yeah. read off the screen or, the, yeah. or maybe ask them a question about the, the um, slide. That's a good, um, a good one there is that you're having them do a lot of the talking. There's a big movement to shift 
you know, teacher talk versus student talk. So increasing the amount of student talk that's happening. Um, a lot of classrooms, they will use talk to your partner first. You know, so you're taking a moment where they get to talk to answer maybe a question you're asking. And you say, talk to your partner for two minutes. And then um, you call them back to say, okay, now who can share? You know, so just changing, um, just giving them a minute to move and interact. Um, definitely hands-on. Did any of you watch that Teach documentary that came on CBS the other night? Maybe not. <laughs> but um, on there they talked about, um, they call it the 360 classroom. So they showed a classroom where all the walls were whiteboards and the kids were all up solving problems. And the fact that all the kids could be actively you know, doing something at the same time. We don't have those classrooms, but the point is the fact that, you know, don't hesitate to let a child come demonstrate something or show something because they like that. Yeah, so you'd say they would respond well. So like, if we call up, you know, three or four students to the front to act something out. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Also, we're like, calling on people, like, like, can you answer this? Like, just like random person. Yes. And, as a teacher, if you're going to do random like that, you kind of let them know, okay, today I got a few questions and I may call on you, so be ready, unless you're gonna say raise hand. Typically they raise hand. So if you're gonna do random, I would say just kind of share your expectations. Okay. Yes. So here I'm thinking that, I mean, these have been great questions. Yeah. But I'll bet there are equally many more that we're gonna counter between now and getting the kid. Is there, and I don't know, do we have a way that- Email. It does well, I know, but is that just like barrage of emails? Is, it, is that okay? Is there a way that it needs to be? I think it's okay. That's okay? Yeah. Because you know, I know you're a busy person and you've got 12, actually mm -hmm. 14 technically students in the class. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I feel like I have the answer, so it's not like something I gotta really run and research. Yeah. So right. um, okay. I'm gonna put my email up there and I will welcome your questions. Um, just as he's stating, like maybe think about as soon as a question comes to mind, maybe wait a little bit, and maybe get a list versus sending multiple email after email after email. But um, absolutely, you can um, email me. I cannot believe you all have chalkboards. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Which, by the way, it might be good for you to talk after I get done about 
your fifth, fifth and sixth, seventh, seventh and eighth, and maybe what those groups are like. Okay. Okay. Um, at least what you told me before. And these guys are going to teach a little bit more on the design process, and they're going to have a pre-made design challenge that they're going to just be running. I know it works. It'll be a fun experience. Okay. Right? They'll get to introduce themselves. They'll get to talk a little bit about what they like. For the following four weeks, sets of two, I don't know, it's not completely, uh, or, you know, like you heard earlier, we have to kind of make some adjustments, but there will be two design challenges from each of these individuals that they're going to be running. They're going to have materials that they're going to bring with them. Okay. They're going to have a presentation. They're also going to have a video that they're going to want to show at the very beginning of the first time they get up there. Um, they're going to have... Uh, prototype that everybody does together and then they're going to have an open build time where they're going to get to just display, you know, discover, explore, you know, and then they're going to test it. So 90 minutes, they're going to try and chop it up pretty appro appropriately, you know, to try and make sure this works. So uh, that's a little bit about us, what we're planning to do. So it sounds like that you looked at this 90 minutes and you chunked it into I do this during this and this. 15 minutes of this and this. What I'm trying to do is this. just make sure that everybody doesn't take too much time on their presentation, the first part, so that we kill the energy and attention level. Right, exactly. And we get them hands on as soon as possible so that they, and also that the design projects are difficult and complex enough so that you can add an extra layer. Like let's say you have some high performing students, they can move on and do a different challenge after they complete the first one. Like, okay, you did this. Now are you able to do this? That sounds good. Because the um, in every classroom you'll see like a our, their agenda for their 80 minute classes. So they're used to that, you know, big chunk of time. But teachers learn to chunk it, you know. So just changing those activities helps in engaging students. You know, if I, if I would have had like 10 minutes of this and 10 minutes of this and 10 minutes of that, you all would have been even more engaged than just me talking. So the fact that you're changing the activities in different periods of time, that engages you know, students. All right, so who wants to talk about the research and the design project that they want to try and play with for the kids? How about Nate? Yeah, I knew you were going to raise your hand. By the way, <laughs> did anybody get to fill out, is there problems with the t-shirts? Yeah, some of the names got messed up. I was accidentally in someone else's slot. I think a lot of the